Dorian, and welcome to Def Diary 122. Today we're going to be talking about part two of the planetary rework. Today we're going to be talking mostly about population jobs, strata, housing, growth, and migration because all of these tie into each other in fascinating ways that we're going to be discussing today specifically starting off with population jobs so Le Guin coming at some time in the future is going to deal with resource production a completely different way as it is right now in 2.1.2 now as it is right now you get a pop it grows onto a tile and it works that tile until the end of of time now this is going to get a lot deeper in 2.1.2 with the addition of the capped and uncapped um, resource extraction system now there's like i mentioned capped and uncapped what does that even mean well capped means that there is only so many things oh, so many workers of a certain type you can have on a planet for instance if you only have five mineral mines you can only have five workers that mine those minerals and then you have the uncapped jobs which basically are clerks um, and uh, entertainers and stuff like that that basically generate as much of their particular resource until they are um, maxed out on their housing but we're going to be talking about housing in a little bit um this is actually kind of interesting because the way the resource production works is, is you don't actually assign certain particular workers to a to a resource let's say you have a mine and you have a worker on there if you start building robots and with uh, drilling tools and stuff like that they will automatically take the job of those initial miners because they are superior at that particular uh, job whether or not that is food percentages and whatnot so that is actually really cool but it also causes problems because workers that are out of jobs um well they require additional resources and they are not all that happy however pops will find uh, automatically uh, any empty jobs that they are capable of holding uh, which basically means that um yeah any pop that can go into any job and kind of needs to be uh, capable of holding that uh this is uh, kind of interesting so no longer any manual assignment of specific pops to specific jobs as uh, apparently according to the developers it's a one of the more micromanaging aspects of the old tile system and i completely agree with that as well especially if we're dealing with sectors and stuff like that if you try to micromanagement um, a lot of the pops in those particular setups you would find yourself in a situation where the governor of that sector or at least the sector ai would automatically flip it back on to whatever tile you popped it on which was rather annoying so with this particular automation uh, makes life a lot easier and a li little bit less frustrating while still deeping it out in a different kind of way kind of like how you're digging a ditch and then decide you know what this ditch is digging uh, deep enough uh, i'm gonna dig an even deeper ditch over there which is kind of the system that we have ahead of us uh, then there is resources that are administration uh, focused things like the uncapped jobs that we already talked about a little bit uh, clerks that are service industry workers uh, quote unquote as the developers are saying space baristas that generate luxury goods and also trade value now all of these uncapped jobs can generate certain values so in this particular case space baristas clerks generate trade value whereas artisans or entertainers generate different things such as happiness or unity or something like that and there's also a specification about something called a enforcer which is apparently the local police that works to uh, suppress dis dissidents and reduce crimes on your plan uh, on your planet and that's going to be talked about in death diary 123 things martin for teasing them now there's also some job rarities certain jobs will only spawn if certain uh conditions are met such as crystal miners they'll only be available on crystal crystal mines same thing with batharian stone or rare pets and that sort of thing which is kind of cool uh obviously there is also some anomalies apparently that uh, add unique planetary features that uh, generate jobs so i'm looking forward to see all those shroud jobs and psionicists and whatnot on those worlds and some empires will also have uh, 
different kinds of jobs, such as the hive minds and machine empires will have their own special jobs that are not available to others. And jobs, uh, well, they are fully, fully moddable as they are, are economic units, and uh, they will come with auto-generated modifiers and functions, so you can basically, completely and totally, easily mod uh, any sort of empire and their population as you want. So, exotic dancers, here we come. Then, let's talk about socialism. Now we're going to be talking about strata and unemployment. So, as we already discussed before, a pop holds a job. Sometimes they don't hold a job. They're, sometimes they're unemployed. Regardless of their status of employment, they will be part of what is called a strata. A strata is basically the class of society that they are in. We've got the rulers, which are the government, wealthy elite, and in some particular cases, the aristocracy, which is also available as well. Uh, we got the specialists, which are scientists and uh, all the, basically any sort of resource, not resource generating, but special resources, your unity, your science, that sort of thing. So uh, also working in refineries to generate uh, special resources such as alloys and, and that sort of thing. Uh, yeah, and they also require a certain amount of uh, luxury goods to stay happy. Uh, the previous one, like the the wealthy elite, they need a lot of luxury goods to stay healthy. And then the, finally, at the bottom of the, the pile are the workers. The workers that are uh, the biggest part of your entire population. And they will generally do like raw resource extraction and that sort of thing. And they don't really need as much luxury goods as um, uh, then rulers and specialists, but I'm sure that sooner or later they will attempt to rise up uh, from uh, their, well, their enslaved, indentured slavery. And uh, yeah, the proletariat will rise up, so to speak. And then we have fully automatic space communism or something along those lines. So there's also uh, special strata, aside from those three that we just talked about, and those are jobs specific. Um, in this particular case, slaves are a separate strata that obviously don't really need all that many luxury goods, which is kind of straightforward. Um, there is also a strata for, and I'm quickly looking through the list here. Yeah, robo strata, although they have their own style of approach there's a, from, what, from what i understood is that there's only two of them the worker and the thinker or something along those lines so that's kind of interesting but yeah there is a, a lot of different strata available depending on what kind of empire we have and the image we have right here is basically saying hey it's a stratified economy uh, rulers, they need a certain amount of stuff, and specialists need another certain amount of stuff, and that generates happiness, and if you're unemployed, that reduces happiness, which is kind of cool. However, there are some issues with this. If you have a, a ruler or a certain person from a certain strata, and they become unemployed and are forced to work in something that is not becoming of their stature, they will become incredibly unhappy. They will be demoted to a lower strata, which is kind of funny because, um, for instance, if you have aristocracy from an empire or something like that, and you switch your ethics or you switch your you're starting stuff uh, to something else and you are no longer required to have aristocracy, they will become very unhappy and they will be forced to work in other places or they will become unemployed, who knows, but they will be very unhappy and who knows, you may have yourself a uprising on your hands. So actually dealing with some of these jobs and um, their strata and societal status is actually going to be really important in order to take care of um, well, happiness and therefore also production output, which is, of course, important. So, yeah, instability is going to be an issue if you're going to start demoting pops all over the shop. And that causes problems, and especially in this particular case, in a stratus stratified economy, which is, like I mentioned, a separate item on the uh, living standards tick. I per personally prefer academic privilege, but that's like a whole different bag of beans not that that is really uh, an idiom but uh, i i like it and i'm gonna go with it finally there's also the addition of uh, fully automatic uh, gay space communism there is gonna be a um a uh, uh a thing available for your empire which is called shared burden which means that everybody has the same living standard everybody everybody is the same what a beautiful beautiful 
society where everybody has the same upkeep and everybody has the same amount of happiness and of course you can also go for full utopian abundance and uh, do it like that so that's kind of fun you get a total 20 percent bonus on everybody and uh, that's obviously going to cost you all the luxury resources which you're going to need to feed from somewhere and of course like we already mentioned the aristocracy and the nobles and all that stuff anyway let's talk a little bit about housing housing is not something that we have already talked about and i think it's kind of cool um pops will generally only grow as uh based on amount the amount of housing that is available on your planet which is by district so you can build uh urban districts which generate a certain amount of housing now every basic pop needs a one unit of housing and de however depending on what traits or stratum or jobs they have uh that may change so for instance if they are decadent maybe as an example they may need more housing which is kind of cool slaves however they can live in smaller spaces robots that um are not uh, sentient or sapient my apologies uh they uh they uh they kind of can live in the closet yeah it's kind of like bender from futurama who literally lives in a space that is about the size of nothing so yeah that's kind of cool how that has gone and uh, funnily enough how housing is not a hard limit which basically means you can have infinite pops on your planet however if you do not have enough housing for your pops then you will get something called overcrowding which basically means there's too many dudes or dudettes on your planet and um yeah you will get some negative statuses such as reduced growth speed or lowered happiness and stability basically a necromunda always good and uh, that also will um, increase the amount of migration that will be uh, done on that planet and uh, migration as uh, we've already talked about is something that's going to be in this particular death diary yeah, but not yet we're going to talk about pop growth first and that migration is kind of sort of a part of this so pop growth pop growth is natural natural reproduction and immigration so a planet that has only a single growing species will only have a single growing species at any time you can uh, and it will always grow the species in your empire that is the least available or the more preferred if that makes any sense so i'll put this into perspective let's say that you are a bunch of xenophobic maniacs who do not like other aliens and they basically eschew them and they don't like them at all so that means that population from uh, those particular ones those particular pops will most likely grow more than the filthy xenos down at the bottom of the ladder of chaos so to speak however this uh, makes things particularly interesting if you were synthetic species which i believe came in with utopia or synthetic dawn i want to say but um yeah that basically means that if you have a syncretic species the one will grow and then the other so that you always have your stability which is kind of cool uh, population decline can also happen we already talked a little bit by about that overcrowding uh, can decrease population uh, migration treaties can decrease population um, full citizens that are privileged will move onto conquered planets and uh, replace the less privileged population and uh, displace them to other empires like the filthy xenos that they are which is uh, you know it's, it's kind of part of the game and then finally immigration and emigration now i'm gonna just quote this verbatim because it took me a little while to wrap my head around it so here we go each planet has a immigration pull and emigration push of value generated by factors such as housing stability unemployment etc so by subtracting uh subtracting emigration and immigration the over migration state of the planet is calculated a planet with more emigration and immigration will have faster pop decline but would also export its emigration value to a general migration pool that is distributed amongst potential immigration targets planets with higher immigration pull will pull from this uh will pull from this pool and therefore have higher uh, immigration which will then add up straight into the growth value that made a lot more sense now i uh, wrote uh, why i spoke it out out loud rather than in my noggin then there's also of course pop up assembly robots the usual stuff uh, that's a separate thing that's going on there. It doesn't really impact things except jobs, uh, which is always good. And of course, in this particular case, unlike growth, you can assemble uh, assemble pops at the same pace as growing pops, which is kind of useful. Uh, useful. 
Right, we're gonna wrap up this episode here. I hope that you have enjoyed it. Uh, this has been number two out of a series of four regarding planetary rework in Le Guin. However, uh, next week we're gonna be talking about number three and the uh, elusive subject of crime, happiness, and stability is gonna be tackled in that one. I hope you're looking forward to it. And on top of that, with a bit of luck, tomorrow uh, on the uh, 24th of August 2018, I should have some footage from a certain game on a console. Good times. Anyway, we're going to wrap it up here. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, take good care of yourselves and as always, eat shutter.